Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to my July 2020 update video. Coming up. Alright, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome once again to my July 2020 update video for, you guessed it, July 2020. Woo! So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, we're going to go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So, <sighs> breathe in that good us prana. And as always, let's just jump right into it. The first thing that I want to talk about is obviously YouTube stuff, right? So as far as my channels goes, um, this channel is pretty much dedicated to like personal life updates as well as miscellaneous stuff. So um, my main goal with it is to just upload a video once a month, just to let y'all know how I'm doing any overall updates to things stuff like that so as far as that goes doing pretty good as far as my second channel goes edited by the Andy San it's my video editing tutorial channel that channel is doing really well it's getting that consistent traffic doing good things and even though I haven't really updated it in a couple weeks now um, but I do plan on maybe throwing in a couple new tutorials see how they do and going from there then my third channel is the one I'm spending the most time on, and that's my Andy Japandi channel. And I'm only really able to put in like one video a week just due to schedule and everything like that. But uh, you guys are really showing up in the comments, really giving the videos I put out there a lot of love, and I really appreciate it. But right now with that channel, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm not really burnt out per se, but I'm just kind of in that like pre-burnout phase where the ideas aren't really coming as easily as they used to, or even really, more importantly, the enthusiasm for those ideas isn't really there as much as it used to be. Um, I don't know if it's just me looking a little too into like analytics and kind of seeing where other people are as far as their YouTube journey in the same niche and everything. I've just been following a lot of uh, bigger YouTubers and kind of seeing how they do things and seeing if there's any ways that I can improve my own channels and content and stuff like that. And you start getting into this headspace of, you know, imposter syndrome and just, you know, my content's not really good enough. And am I boring? Am I old? Is this format in general just kind of stale? Like, this is all they want to see is just fucking, you know, capsule hotel videos and kooky cafes and ooh, wacky Japan. and all the other shit that gets the clicks and you know you start to get really cynical about making videos on YouTube in general and you know I don't want to you know end up leaving YouTube because of, of something like that so I realize you know you got to trust in the creative process and know that this is just part of the process you know the the dip as Seth Godin likes to put it so so I did put up a couple ideas I did have for future Andy Japandi videos and uh, as the time of this recording, the one that's leading the charge is how I fell in love with Japan. So I'm gonna keep that poll up for a couple more days, kind of see where things are and see if maybe one of the other options, you know, breaks free of it or whatever. And uh, we'll just go from there. So be on the lookout for whatever video wins soon. But uh, as far as like live streams and stuff like that for the channel, again, due to uh, schedule and everything, I've had to basically put the, the, the live streams on hiatus. And also, I, I think they've kind of run their course for the time being, as far as things goes. Um, I just feel like, you know, I've kind of done enough breakfasts in Japan to where people are like, okay, I get it, you know, next. <laughs> you know? So it, it is nice to like connect with my audience and stuff like that, and that's cool. But at the same time, I want to give them something of value other than just, you know, talk with me as I'm stuffing my face full of the, the same shit, you know, there's only so many times you can see me eat tuna mayo onigiri and drink the same black coffee and all this other stuff before it's like, all right, I get it, you know? <laughs> so I think I'm just going to put those on pause for a little bit while I think of something new, uh, just kind of a new way to kind of judge things up a little bit as far as that goes. Um, and I might even be doing that with the Andy Japandi channel in general, because you know, I really do like making content, uh, especially Japan themed content. But right now I'm just kind of, uh, not really burnt out, but like I said, just kind of at that pre-burnout phase. So I just want to maybe take it a little easy on that channel for a while and maybe focus on something else. That usually helps me with, with my creativity. Usually I find 
um, either just taking a break entirely and waiting for uh, the creative juices to start flowing again usually helps or just focusing my creative energy on something completely different. They usually give me ideas for like the other stuff that I was having problems with. So I did this originally when I started my Instagram account uh, back in what, 2012 or something like that. So I did that originally as just kind of a thing to focus on when I wasn't making videos. And it also gave me just some creative ideas and just kind of kept the momentum going for things so I could make my videos better. So one of the things I was thinking of is uh, something actually I've been thinking of for a while now, and that is uh, doing podcasts. So I have an idea for a podcast called the Creator 101 Podcast, where I go one-on-one -on -one with creators like you. And uh, the idea for it is to be themed around content creators. So whether it's uh, doing interviews with content creators, which is the original idea, but I figure to help build up the series, it might be best for me to just kind of go in depth with a lot of topics that are relevant to content creators on YouTube, Twitch, wherever the case. Uh, YouTube obviously is my wheelhouse. So that's the area that I can speak the most confidently from. Uh, but I do want to get other creators from other platforms onto uh, my podcast as well, just to kind of you know learn from them, if anything and uh, stuff like that. So that might be something that I focus my uh, creative energies on for the time being. But uh, even though this is kind of a terrible segue, um, the last thing I'm gonna talk about as far as YouTube stuff goes, and I'll make a dedicated video on it so you guys can learn more, but I have officially launched my own merch line for the Angie Pandy channel. So um, I'll leave a link down below in the description, maybe pin it in the comments. Um, so you guys can check that out. Right now I have just a t-shirt, hoodie, and a mug up there right now, the Engine Pandy logo. Um, as time moves on, I'll be putting up more designs, more uh, things that you can buy, I guess. It just, this is just kind of a trial run just to kind of see how things go. And mostly just for me to learn how to market stuff like this. Cause like I always wanted to do like merchandising in, in some uh, aspect, but I never really, understood the platform, really knew how to like market myself, you know, like it always feels weird. Cause I guess, you know, I've been on YouTube for a long ass time, you know, since 2006. So, you know, I still kind of have a little bit of that old school YouTuber vibe where I'm like, you know, just do it cause you love it. Don't sell out and all this other shit. But at the same time, like I'm 34 years old and your boy need them months. You know, I'm not living at mommy and daddy's place anymore and don't have to worry about money. like. I kind of need shit. And plus, you know, my audience has been kind of asking for it as well. You know, just little messages here and there and stuff like that. And it's just like, you know what? I'll just put it up, see what happens. I kind of want to learn more about marketing that anyway. So why not, right? And uh, also I revamped my Patreon, patreon.com slash the Andy So if you go there, there's different uh, reward tiers as well. Uh, I do plan on for the either top four or five tiers. Uh, they're, I call them secret tiers, <laughs> basically. Um, so for those tiers, I do plan on adding more stuff to those to kind of zhuzh them up a little bit. Uh, but for now, it's just kind of is what it is. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited to uh, be redesigning my Patreon. Because again, just like with merchandising, I always felt kind of weird about like, you know, charging fans for money or whatever, but you know, it is kind of something that a lot of other creators have had good success with and I want to learn more about it and to actually offer you guys some value rather than me just taking money just cause, you know? <laughs> so I want it to be a uh, very reciprocative, reciprocative relationship as far as Patreon goes. So I want to give you guys as much value as you're giving me. So definitely want to build that up as well, but that's enough rambling about the uh, the YouTube stuff. So let's move on to some personal life stuff, right? So main thing going on right now, uh, personal life wise is school. So I just passed through midterms, um, did pretty well on a couple midterms and then got my head handed to me on a couple others. Uh, one of them was mostly just due to time constraints. Uh, I spent like way too much time on like one section 
of the midterm and didn't have enough time for the other. And the other section counted more than the first section I was working on. So it was just an issue of time management for me in that, in that case. Um, but uh, I can definitely come back from it, you know, just kind of looking at the, uh, the grade breakdown of uh, the different assignments and stuff like that. So it's just a temporary setback, but as long as I uh, do well on the other stuff moving forward, it should be fine. And then for the other midterm, I was completely destroyed by it. Like, um, I just didn't expect so many problems that I wasn't good at to be on the midterm and was just completely blindsided by it, which, you know, is my fault. Kind of is what it is. But I did talk to my professor about it. And just like with the other midterm, as long as I keep on keeping on, you know, doing the homework, doing good on the tests, all that typical, you know, class stuff, then uh, things will be good. So just got to keep pressing on and uh, do better moving forward. And so moving on to basically like the big problem in my life as of late has been, um, where am I going next? So, um, as you guys know, this is my last semester at Lakeland University of Japan under the associate's degree program. Uh, so I just been looking around for, uh, the next step in, uh, in my education. And originally I thought it was going to be Temple University of Japan. I applied to them, was, uh, talking with the, um, the admissions counselor about things was, you know, keeping him apprised of, of everything that was going on. He said things were going pretty good. And then once I turned in all my transcripts, um, I got the uh, notice that I was rejected from from Temple due to low grades from when I was originally in college back, you know, in the Western KVCC days. And because of the low grades from those colleges, even though I did really well following that. Uh, I guess like the averages don't average up or something. So he said it was uh, below standards. So kind of was what it was. And you know, I decided to to fight that because it's like, yeah, I kind of did shitty when I started out going back to school, you know, but, uh, you know, I got my shit together, took a break, figured myself out and uh, been maintaining above a 3.0 ever since. So I just kind of wanted to let him know, like, you know, hey, I've been doing really good these past three going on four semesters straight. So like, what do you want from me? <laughs> but uh, apparently they're very strict about overall grade requirements and stuff like that. So, you know, I went all the way up to the uh, the Dean of Admissions, um, oddly enough. And uh, yeah, he hit me with a pretty hard no. So uh, I was really, really broken up about it. Cause I feel, feel like, you know, I've really worked hard to get myself out to Japan and to stay out here in Japan. And just to have the rug pulled out from underneath me really wrecked my confidence. And obviously with what's going on in the world with uh, Kelowna Chan World Tour, um, it's not really giving me a whole lot of opportunities to go out and socialize or anything like that to kind of blow off some steam or whatever. So it just feels like I'm stuck in my room most of the time, you know? So that doesn't help either. But uh, <clears throat> one of the good things about uh, about what's, what with uh, what's going on is is uh, Lakeland. So um, originally I was going to go to their home campus out in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, because they have like a home transfer program that you basically do two years out here at Lakeland University of Japan. Then you go to the home campus for the last two years to get your bachelor's and. Uh, you know, that's one of the, the options available. And that's something I've been really looking at. But also recently, um, Lakeland has been looking to start up a four-year program at the Japan campus. Now, right now, the time is recording. It's in the final stages of getting approved. So they just have to do a lot of stuff on the, uh, the back end as far as the local government and stuff like that. That's kind of where it's at right now. But uh, once it's approved through them, then they'll be able to offer the four-year program. And I'm really excited about it. And once it's officially approved, I'll probably make a dedicated video on it on my Andy Japandi channel, kind of breaking down what the four-year program is, what's all offered and all that fun stuff. 
So be on the lookout for that. Hopefully coming soon. So that's basically where I'm at. You know, I just, you know, I'm hoping that the program gets approved before I graduate next month in August. Um, and I'm just, you know, really in like a limbo type spot where just, I don't know, man, like I want to do a lot of good things, but I'm just kind of in this weird holding pattern, you know, like I want to stay out here in Japan as best as I can. But uh, if school's not an option for me, you know, then what am I going to do? Right. You know, obviously if I get an associate's, you know, technically I can stay here in Japan, but the amount of jobs that offer working visas for an associate's degree, pretty minimal. And even then, I've heard some horror stories about them. So it's like, you know, <laughs> so it's kind of difficult. So I definitely want to get that bachelor's degree so, you know, I can be more flexible with my uh, job opportunities. And also just for a sense of accomplishment, because, you, you know, I've been after this bachelor's degree for a long ass time now. And at this point in my life, man, I just want to get the shit over with. You know, I just am tired of, you know, going after it. I just want to get it done, get it, and then just carry on with the, uh, the next piece of business in my life. So that's kind of where things are at right now. Sorry to end it on a, on a bummer note, but uh, there's also a lot of good things to look forward to in the future as well. So hopefully if uh, Lakeland University of Japan approves the program, before I graduate, then I'll be staying here. I'll be making a fun video like, yeah, everything's good. But uh, for now, it's just kind of meh. So anyway, I think we'll end things here. <laughs> I've been rambling and raving long enough. So with all that said, guys, this is the Andy Sound. Sign for now. And as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.